Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I am joined by the amazing duo of Joanna and Garrett, the Coven of Screams. How are you doing today, guys? Good. How are you? <laughs> yes. God, this yes. is going to be so much <laughs> yes. fucking fun. Um, I'm a lot better now. I've been looking forward to this all day. Ever since we linked up, I've been very, very excited about doing this. But before we talk about why you're both here, I would like for the people that don't know you, to get to know you a little bit. Um, they are a pair of best friends that love anything and everything that has to do with anything going bump in the night, all the creepy <laughs> and crawly and spooky things. Um, spooky and scary is their jam. They've always wondered what happens beyond the shadows, and they have questions, and they are not afraid to ask the spirits for answers. So, Correct. coming to screen, yeah. what is it exactly that you guys do? So... so <laughs> There's a lot of things um, kind of under our umbrella yeah. right now. Um, we first started with our podcast, mm -hmm. which is um, Ice Coffee with Heavy Screams. Um, and the way that kind of started was we were just sitting watching a horror movie. Yeah. And we had questions. And we, we had all kinds of questions. Like, <laughs> why, we're why won't, right, we're going to talk about it. And we talked about it. And we're like, why don't we just do this as a podcast? Right. So that kind of started that off. And then uh, we started getting more things under our belt. Mm -hmm. And we were just like, let's just do one big llc type of situation and just do a coven of screams and put everything under that umbrella so we have the podcast we have our bubbles and brews which is kind of like our um specialty special cocktails, cocktails and that we're hoping to foam, get. our yeah. cold foam cold brews <laughs> um so kind of just like that stuff and we um hope to have more yeah come down the way so yes. yes well you guys aren't too far away from me so i gotta try one of these cold brews yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. absolutely that's my oh, jam bro. <laughs> um, so, you know, you talked about how you have a lot of things under your umbrella, so you decided to branch mm -hmm. out and do the whole LLC, but the good thing about that umbrella, I can kind of close it up a little bit and put all those links mm -hmm. right down in the description, guys, so you yes, don't have to go correct. far looking for all the amazing things that they do, <laughs> so make sure you're checking out all the hard work that they put into this, because like I said, when you go from doing a podcast to forming an LLC and doing a whole business, and you have this whole branch of things, it can be very hard and sometimes very humbling to do all these things at once. And the best way to get over that is to have amazing supporters like you going and checking them out, listening to the podcast, following what they're doing with the business. And, you know, we're all in this together. We all love this together. So right. um, I know you guys started with a horror movie and that's when you got, you know, to d decided to do the podcast. But I, I at least got to ask, what was the horror movie that kicked it off for you guys? Oh it wasn't, I feel like it was a Netflix one. It, we love B-rated Netflix. And it's so funny because like everybody else is like, oh, it's called B-rated. Okay, listen. It the B-rated, it, it might be a little bland, a little silly, a little sloppy. But, but horror is horror. Horror is horror. Like getting scared regardless. Right. But the B ones are just, I don't know, they're just more fun to me, even yeah. like even if they're not scary. Right. It's just something They're that, more fun to dissect. Correct. So if you like and we're just like, why are you doing that type of situation? Why are you here? Yes. <laughs> So um, yeah, kind the of... thing I feel about, like, especially like the indie horror and the B horror mm -hmm. films, it's more of a passion project yeah, when you're right. watching those. They're not yeah. doing this like, oh, well, what can we do to create a huge budget and make a mm -hmm. shitload of money? They're like, hey, how can we tell the best possible story that we can tell right. and make our viewers fall in love with the story that we're creating right now? So, I mean, I agree with you. I, I don't mind going to the cinema and watching a big budget horror film and just having a great time. Mm -hmm. But I love sitting down and watching The Dark and the Wicked. You know, yeah, right, like I, right, right. You know, I can I can rock that out. Or shameless plug: The Bride of the Killer Pinata, streaming now on Amazon Prime and Tubi. Um, what is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I, I killer need... donut. I know. <laughs> killer <laughs> donut. <laughs> okay. So we don't you know. guys are going to have to check out The Bride of the Killer Pinata. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. But Absolutely. we don't see a certain uh, familiar face on the screen at a couple Wait points. A Wait, so... a <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That might be our next episode. Great. Our next episode. Our next yes. episode is going to be about that. Yeah, please. Perfect. That would be a, that would yeah. be such an honor to hear you guys dissect <laughs> it. Um, but you know, and like I said, once you do this and you you start to really branch out, it's amazing. How long have you guys been friends for? Ooh. So kindergarten. We're like thirty three. You don't have um, to say that. Kindergarten. Kindergarten. Basically, then we just had like a what five year separation, maybe. Yeah. Kind of like a five year separation. Yeah. Um. But then we were in the same middle school, mm -hmm. and she we were both in the same homeroom. And I just looked at her one day. I said, "You look very familiar, like very, very familiar." And I then, said, "No, I don't." <laughs> she was just denying the whole situation. I and then I, I guess you. her mom saw me mm -hmm. walking to the library. I guess, and her mom was like, "Oh my god, do you remember him? Do you remember him?" And then 
after that it was just all right here we go again correct (laughs) that's amazing (laughs) and it's cool because especially when you start to do these things it can be very hard even to start it with a friend because Mm -hmm. then you have to worry about not only the personal relationship but the business relationship and everything i've seen of you guys you guys are so genuine and so sweet and so kind and that's one of the big things about the horror community that i absolutely obsess over is the fact that yeah we're watching movies about girls faces getting shoved through tvs and going <laughs> to prime time bitch and all this stuff but right, um, right, the, right. The, i would say easily 90 percent of the people i've met throughout the community are just the sweetest mm-hmm. kindest most gentle people and all they want to do is talk horror with people mm-hmm. and you know share their love of the genre share their experiences with the genre and we're all so proud of the things that we do but we're also proud of each other because of the hard work we all know we all put into what we do here so to have you two on is truly a blessing for me because i i look up to what you guys do i respect what you guys do and the way that you guys have been a partnership because i know I, i've been married for 18 years me and my wife got married in high school and oh. to still be together and still doing sledgehammer horror together um, I understand and I respect the hard work that goes into mm-hmm. having a personal relationship, having a business relationship and trying to separate the two of them. And uh, it's, it's harder than people think, you know, we, is, is, never, <laughs> no, <it is. laughs> yeah, like we, we never go into sledgehammer horror, even if we're fighting, you know, having an argument, right. whatever, because we don't really fight because she would kill me. But um, <laughs> if we're having an argument or something that's squashed because this is business, business is business, right, personal, right. personal. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you guys are able to separate that and maintain your friendship while you're spending so much time with each other. You know, it gets to the point to where you start finishing each other's sentences. So, uh... <laughs> and talking exactly the same, we just know what we're about to say. To correct. Each, and it's, it's correct. kind of disgusting sometimes, to... but it's all right. <laughs> I adore it. I'll be honest. With you. Um, so here's something that is extremely insane. And extremely crazy because this episode marks two firsts for this podcast. Mm-hmm. One, I've never talked to a duo that had nope. the same first horror movie. <laughs> this is the first time that that's ever, ever yeah. happened. Ooh. And on top of that, this is almost episode 500. We have three episodes to go, guys, until Ooh. we're at the 500th episode. I've never talked about this movie before. This is the first time I will have the Wait pleasure and the privilege to talk about this movie. So, I mean, you guys can finish each other's sentences, so we're just going to come right out and ask. Yeah. I said at the beginning, guys, all their links are down in the description, but now we're going to go back to the past and talk about what got you each started in the horror genre, your first horror movie, and guys, your first horror movie was... Halloween, Halloween Town. Town. <laughs> Halloween. Except for Halloween Town 4. We're not going to talk, gonna talk about it. We're not going to do they, it. They, they... We're not. Calm down. I, I, okay. okay. She said that there was a Halloween Town 4. I don't recall what, that. What, what is, is a Halloween Town 4? It's, you know, it's a trilogy. It, it's, it deleted out of my mind. If it's a trilogy, but you know, that's we digress. <laughs> so today we're, we'll be discussing the first installment of Halloween Town, yes. correct? Correct. Yes. I was really scared there for a second because that's the only one I've seen. So I was about to freak out. Um, <laughs> the, the good thing about this is, and I try to explain this to people, especially in horror, above all other genres, I feel like there's a gateway that can get mm-hmm. you into as a child. I don't feel like there's really gateway comedy. I don't feel like there's gateway mm-hmm. sci fi. I don't feel like right. there's gateway rom coms. You know, like right. for horror, you have this this level of horror that is truly mm-hmm. gateway that can scare a child, but also make them feel comfortable. You have right. your Hocus Pocus, Adam's Family, Casper, oh. Scooby Doo, and of course, talking about it for the first time, Halloween Town. Mm-hmm. So, um, y- people come to me like, you know, you really count these as horror. Of course, I count these as uh, horror. Yeah, gateway yeah. horror is still horror. Marijuana is a gateway drug. It's still a drug, whether you like right. it or not. It still is. <laughs> so, um, legalize that shit. Um, correct. Right, so, yeah. you know, Halloween Town is a movie that I think, you know, it, it's put up there with your Caspers, with your Hocus Pocus mm-hmm. on what people have the nostalgia and the memories right. of this film. But um, I'll start with you first this time, Joanna. Do you remember about how old you were the first time you had seen it? Probably like five or I feel like we were young, young because it was on. Did you guys watch it together? No, no, I don't think so. I think it was like a separate thing, but yeah. then somehow okay. just became both our favorite things that got us because we're witches. Because we said, <laughs> and that's why, because yeah. like we like the whole witchy thing. So we're like, yes. So, so yeah, probably. it was super young. It was like I feel like five or six. Yeah, super. Okay. Yeah. Wow. 
Well, okay, so we know that you were quite young when you had watched it for the first time, Joanna, but Garrett, do you remember who you were with the first time that you had seen it? Myself. <laughs> I literally did. Back, <laughs> listen, listen. Back, back in the old Nick at Night days, huh? Back in right. the old Nick at Night, you know, <laughs> Disney Channel when Disney was really good and had all the good shows, you know? Y yes, that. You guys those. can't see, but I just made the Mickey Mouse ears at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> those Jason, times. Now, let's be real. I got to take a time out here real quick. Tell me we didn't all want to be that person when we were younger. That could oh, my God. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> I used to get so <laughs> mad. I was like, why can't I be one of them? Right. Like, what are they? What am I doing Practice wrong? In your <laughs> right. This right. is horse shit. Right. Um, so we know that you guys are both very young, the first time that you had seen this movie. And it's obviously a movie that has stood the test of time. Like you said, it's gotten sequels, at least uh, two sequels. I, I heard there was a rumor that there was a fourth sequel. I, I don't know. believe it. I've never seen it. I know. But, um, Correct. I know. <laughs> you know. It's a movie that still, I've talked about this movie a lot. I've never gotten to talk about it on the podcast. And I didn't catch this movie when I was younger. I think it was a little bit, I, it, when it came out, I was right at that age to where it was like, Oh, that's little kid stuff. Right, right, I right, like right. Freddy. You know, like yeah. to me, every kid goes through that stage to where they're like, right. oh, the young, that's for kids. I'm not a kid anymore. So I never caught this as a kid, but you know, you go back and watch it now, and I feel the nostalgia rushes. Right. As uh -huh. even though I didn't mm -hmm. watch it as a kid, it takes me back to the late 80s, early 90s. Yes. And I want to put my pants on backwards and jump, jump, and put on my headphones. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Correct. That's, that's what watching this movie reminds me of, is that Halloween time, having fun as a kid. But yes. Joanna, do you remember which scene it was from Halloween Town that affected you the most? Yes. So it was when um, Agatha was reading the book. And Marnie saw herself as the witch. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my can that be me? I want that to be me. <laughs> That's what I felt like. Correct. That's what I was like, wow. You know, this this regular family is just in this house and they can be witches. They can have magic. And they just can... explore. Oh, it wow. just made me want to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going <laughs> <Right. just laughs> to. See, and I love how. And, you know, a lot of people lump this and Hocus Pocus together. I personally don't because I feel like, you know, Hocus Pocus was more that cinematic mm -hmm. thing. Yep. And, mm -hmm. yeah. But they both had that childish touch to make it so the witches were scary. But at the same time, you wanted to be a part of that. Even as a young right. boy, you know, I wanted to be a part of the Hocus Pocus crew. I wanted to be the guy that was there like, don't worry, Danny. Ken's don't here worry, to Danny. save you. I'm you know, here like, for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. I won't let him light that damn candle. <laughs> but, you know, to, to go back and relive these moments and see, like, this is what started us. This is what got us going down the road to become the people that we are today. Because mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer in if you don't watch the first horror movie that you watched, Butterfly Effect. We might not be here right now. Right. If you guys mm -hmm. didn't watch Halloween Town as kids, there's a good chance that I wouldn't be sitting here having a conversation with Correct. you and how different right. our lives would right. be. So right. we talked about which scene affected you most, Joanna. Uh, what Garrett, what scene would you say was it affected you the most? When they first went to Halloween Town and so everybody was just flapping around. <laughs> when I and seen I all just... the creatures and said, Is this what it is? Because I want to be in this life. I want to be in the mix. Like I want to be in the mix. I can just be myself. I don't I could be a troll. You, like I don't care. I would I would want to be in this whole town because like they don't it was just they just they didn't just, care. They, they just, don't care. Like they themselves. walked around as they were there. Yeah. You know what I mean? They were just existing. They were living. They had no drama. They had no stress. They had no stress. No stress at all. They didn't even have to work. They did, I, right. I want to know. They did not did have they to have work. Jobs? I, okay. I don't know. Okay. We're not trying to make you <laughs> <We're gonna> <laughs> I apologize. This is what happened. Please, no. I'm sitting here <laughs> like, it's nice like... to be on this side of it for once. <laughs> this is what happened. Like, literally, like, it's just that type we're of thing. So like, he's. Now I think about it, I'm like, did they really have that? Like, what did they really do except just live? You know what I mean? Right. So it was just They that, bartered that with rocks is what they did. They probably, right. They probably, right. <laughs> they traded clothes, you know, just little right. you know, stuff. <laughs> you know, and you just brought up a really good point to something that I've said a whole lot on this podcast, because I'm a little bit older than you guys. And I'm quite, I'm the geriatric of the group right now. <laughs> but um, as kids, you know, we didn't have this. We didn't have these right. avenues of the internet. So when we watched these movies, we knew we were different, you know, right. as horror fans. Like, we knew there was something about us that was different. Right. And we watched these movies, and we didn't feel different now. What, like, right. I could be in that town, and I would fit mm. right in with everybody else. Yes. Exactly. I would walk down the street, and they wouldn't look twice at me um, right. because I'm in seventh grade wearing a Scream shirt with green spiky hair 
little horror movie punk rock kid that well, lived in Sand Creek, Michigan, with you know a population of three hundred people and seven thousand horses. So, oh, um, the horses out you know, it, it's, <laughs> yeah. So, like, and that's the thing. Like for us, that was an escape, you know. Right. And now we're so blessed to live in the time that we live in now because we have conventions, mm -hmm. we have the internet, where we can connect with these other people that we know right. are different but are such the same to each of right. us. You know, we all we've been in that area where we were the fucking weirdo, we were mm -hmm. the freak, right. and right. now, you know, especially because we're older and we've matured a little bit, mm -hmm. we love it. We right. love to be the weirdo. We love right, to be right. the freak. I love to be me. I love the fact that there's no one else out there that can be me. I've always exactly. loved that. You know, there, there will never be another one of me. And these horror movies are what help horror movies and punk rock music help me realize yeah. it's amazing to be the fucking weird guy. Right. You know? And then and it brings it back to what you said about how everybody in the community, mm -hmm. like the horror community is all they are all friendly to each yeah. other. They're all like, you know, the the like, most nicest people you meet. It's because we know what it feels like right. to be an outcast. So we don't want everybody else to feel like an outcast. So we're going to make you feel like your family. Correct. And that's what it, that exactly what you just said. Mm -hmm. Basically, is like we're the weirdos. We're the outcasts. So yeah. we, outcasts we know what together. we know what it means right. to right. feel, you know, on the outside. It, it it doesn't matter what it is. Um, horror is the most accepting. We don't care mm -hmm. if you're black, white, gay, straight, Jewish, mm -hmm. Muslim, liberal, conservative. The minute you say you're a horror fan, I'm like, what's Let's up? Go. Let's go. Watch a movie. You right. know, everything else goes to the back burner because at that right. point, at the minute I find out that you're a horror fan, you identify as my friend. That's all that matters Correct. to me because Correct. we're in this together now. We're fucking weird and let's get weird <laughs> together. So, exactly. Um, you know, these movies, you know, t t going back to Halloween Town, um, this is a movie that is, it does have its fair share of scares, but it's it's yeah. just a fun movie overall. So, mm -hmm. Joanna, what would you say your favorite scene from Halloween Town is? When at the end, when Dylan finally realized he was a warlock and stopped tripping and joined his crumb, well heritage, and beat Calabar. That one. That one. I'm like, come on, Dylan. That one. Stop it. And he got his That's little fingers. Correct. Uh, See, and especially even back then, you're just like, yes, this, right. yes, this guy knows what time it is now. You son of a right. bitch. It's right. just like it's, you oh, finally came the to, the, to the right <laughs> side, man. Right. Yes. Um, like you're a Cromwell. <laughs> right. Like how you don't. How, how do you? See, okay, we, we not. We not. We not. Because that he pissed me off the whole movie. The whole movie. <laughs> right. So oh. Gary, you, you obviously we talked about you know. Joanna's favorite scene and you kind of parroted you know that that's a great scene but we do know that there's a trilogy of these movies there is three of them yes, yes. um in the trilogy which one would you say is your favorite oh probably I I would say the second one I know you're gonna say that well and, and like it the first one's great all originals yeah. are always great but the second one we we explore her learning more we yeah. explore um you know her friendships with you know everybody within halloween town right. and she's in and out we get to meet more of the people in halloween town know their story correct and kind of get to relate to them like mm -hmm. um what's his face luke, luke and all mm -hmm. stuff luke i love luke like i, I just <laughs> it's 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 great like a, a trap up a tra right and that and you learn a spell I a part I was, was, say, I, was, I was like wait a minute Wait a minute, a part, a trap, a a part, a trap, a trap, a trap, a like it's, I was in there thinking. The whole I was, spell, yeah. I was like, I was sitting there trying to do it, and it didn't work. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that type of See, stuff, you know? I was seeing Candyman in the mirror. You were trying the spells in the mirror the whole time. That was the spell. Exactly. Right Candyman in the mirror? We talked about this. We talked about we this We did talk lot. about it. You did Candyman in the Oh, Lord. But see, I, I, I was a little white boy. I was like, I'll be safe, you know? Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll be, be all right. <laughs> But you, I'll be aight. I'll be aight. <laughs> you know, I, I don't. That that's a movie that, and again, I didn't understand as a kid how heavy that fucking movie was. Mm -hmm. As a kid, to me, yeah. it was just a horror movie. That that right. was it. It was just a scary right. movie. One of the things in that movie that impacts me the most today, as a thirty-seven-year-old man, mm -hmm. is the scene where Virginia Madsen's talking to him, and she's like, "You know, the cops are called down here all the time, and no one does a fucking thing." But when a white woman gets mugged in a bathroom, you guys are down here in three minutes to save me. Yep. You know, Absolutely. and like you watch that now. Like I said, I will never feel 
Mm -hmm. that type of hatred and i'm not saying i want to um and i'm right. not trying to you know pick on you garrett but right, as a white right, right. guy i've never been pulled over by the cops and afraid for my life because of who i am and so you know as a kid i watched movies like that and tales from the hood and i didn't understand how serious that was and then you watch it as an adult you know and you don't have to be in that position to have empathy right. and mm -hmm. fear you know and so like that's what i love about those movies too is horror since the beginning because one term and the more you guys get to know me the more you'll realize this is true one term i fucking hate is woke horror i hate that term i, I think it's like the most i don't like the word woke either it's just i hate it because like it's such a perverted twisted term now mm -hmm. and um i'm like yeah you know that horror has had social messaging since like nosferatu Right. right like it's it's horror is meant to make you uncomfortable that's right. what it's made for right. and by using these real life issues it makes you uncomfortable you go back to if these movies that were made in the 90s were coming out today uh tales from the hood the oh, people God. under the stairs you know if these movies were coming out today they would be woke horror and i'm like right you guys go touch some fucking grass and <laughs> like learn, read a fucking book and learn something. Get off right. the internet. It's not helping right. you. So um, this next question is actually for both of you. Um, as we all know in Hollywood right now, you know, you got remakes, requels, sequels, kind of all the rage of what's going on. Um, is Halloween town a movie you would like to see remade or like a requel done to today? I don't think so. I don't even know. I don't. I don't really I don't, think so because it's just because it's so. I don't think that it would be. It would done. This. I think Halloween Town was so, just like pure nostalgia, pure magic. I feel like if they made I feel it like today, it, it would be too much CGI, too much like it would try to make it too, too much witchy. Like, like I meant, like we love our witches and stuff, but it it would be too much of. Not like the, the journey magic, of learning the... magic. It will just be more like, oh, Marnie's going to turn evil. Or like, right. just make it more of a mainstream thing rather than, you yeah. know, sure. a family-esque I like the family-esque because, yeah, just like you said, mm, if sure. we didn't have our Twitches, our Halloween Town, our Are You Afraid of the Dark, right. our Goosebumps. Goosebumps, if we didn't have all that, I I mean, that the, those, those are the TV shows is what made me be like, Right, Ooh, and my, right. but if you if you if you were to remake it, but made it the same exact type of thing, you just wanted to reimage it, type like of Hocus Pocus thing, too. Like Hocus Pocus, that's why too. I love Hocus Pocus too. Cause right, because they, like they, they and they didn't take away from the whole magic of magic it. of it all. It was almost the same situation. We Literally. just getting introduced to a new trio. I love right. that, and that's it basically what so it is. Much. Like if we get oh. like, if they did it with um Halloween Town, like. Let's get, they introduce the Barney's like daughter, yeah. or you know, yep. let's see, Sophie. yeah, like Sophie, her growing up with the yeah. witch, or what happened to her. You know, what I mean, just stuff like that. Like if they did that way, then I'll be perfectly fine. But don't sit here and throw all this like CGI ish stuff. And, it's just yeah. not meant for it. Yeah, that's it's no. just not. And that that was gonna be the example I brought up because uh, you know, Hocus Pocus two, is it perfect? No, but it exceeded all my expectations of what mm -hmm. to expect out of that movie. Right. Um, I had a blast with it. Um, and I think that if you're going to do a movie like Halloween Town, whether it's a requel like they did with Hocus mm -hmm. Pocus 2, and you know, they did the same characters years later and they brought in a new bunch of kids. If you do something like that with Halloween Town, bring back some of the actors, bring them back, let right. them reprise their roles as older, you know, so that way we still capture that feeling of how you know you guys felt the first time you watched it. You're right. watching your right. childhood now grown up, you know, like that's right. that's an amazing feeling to have too. So um, I started with you, Joanna. So now I'm going to give this next question to Garrett. And now, <laughs> Joanna, you're actually going to give to be a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater, because <sighs> this is a question I never tell anybody that I ask. And I always ask it <laughs> off the fly. So um, we talked about your guys' first horror movie and what it means to you. But yeah. now, Garrett, my little buddy Ghostface is here, and he has a question for you. Ghostface. What's your favorite <laughs> scary movie, Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite Sorry. horror movie? Of all time, um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, I already know he's a Freddy man. I am a Freddy man. I, we're we're, I we're talking the original eighty four. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, the original, the Johnny Depp. He just. I've that. said like numerous words. times, and I mean numerous times. If you take out the last five minutes of that movie with that stupid fucking Freddy car and that dumb blow up doll mom, that's the perfect horror movie. 
it, it's the when, perfect horror movie if you take out that last five minutes. Absolutely. The practical I effects said, are amazing. Yeah, the kills are amazing. The practical mm-hmm. effects are amazing. You have an, Freddy is on screen in that movie for less than seven and a half minutes. Oh, really? That's how impactful he is. Correct. You do not see Freddy make one kill in that movie. No. Rod is with the sheet being pulled up. <laughs> Tina cool. is getting dragged up the wall and you don't mm-hmm. see her. Johnny yeah. Depp is in the waterbed. You don't see him because they didn't have the budget to do the makeup the same every time. So he's Correct. always in the shadow. He's doing it invisible. He's doing it with the sheet. And how iconic is Freddy Krueger still after seven minutes of being on screen in that movie? That's true. Correct. That's very correct. True. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's just, it's that to me, when I talk about movies that knew how to do what they were doing with the budget they had, to me, it's still top three practical effect horror movies of all time. I put it up there with John Carpenter's The Thing and An American Werewolf in London as my favorite practical effect movies of all time. Um, whether it's Freddy's long arms going down the wall. I do love or, it. I do love you it. Know, yeah. um, everything in it. The Freddy fire stunt when he's on fire at the end and they have that stunt guy. Like mm-hmm. Everything about that movie is just so dope. And you know the actors, the actresses, everything about it is just so yeah. solid from front to back. Until the last five minutes. Um, so, <laughs> all right. Give me a second and you can ask her. Jeez, man. Oh, God. Oh, oh, no. Really oh, no, no. oh gosh. Okay. Okay. Now, Joanna, my buddy Ghostface now has a question for you. Hey, What's your sir. favorite scary movie, Joanna? Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> what is your favorite horror movie? So, mine would be The Strangers. Um, Ooh. I think that home invasion horror is terrifying. Very terrifying. And it's, I mean, we've watched a lot of horror, so it takes a lot to really like scare scare me mm-hmm. that terrifies me every time so Agreed. yes i uh, yes it has the most iconic line of any horror movie because you know, you why us because you were home like, um and like i said me? i talked i, talk, I, I like talked that. about it earlier uh the dark and the wicked which is a movie that absolutely terrified me the first time i watched it i thought i was desensitized to horror and the dark and the wicked genuinely scared me like mm-hmm. genuinely scared right. me Brian Bertino, the same guy that directed The Strangers and wrote The Strangers, wrote The Dark and the Wicked and directed The Dark and the Wicked. Um, I'm a huge fan of Brian's work. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that he is a modern day Hitchcock. I think that the way that he does his, the way that he shoots his films, the Mm -hmm. way that he writes his characters, um, there's just something special about the films that Brian makes. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, when you said The Strangers, I was like, yes, more Brian (laughs) Bertino love. Um, I'm just a huge fan of his, and I like mm-hmm. you said with the strangers. That's a movie that you genuinely are just. What what he does is he takes out the jump scare factor. Yeah, right. He just leaves you with anxiety and stress, jump and you're like, on. please, please jump, please Do break something. the tension. And please. he's like, no, no we'll just keep the that. tension rolling. Right. He knows okay. how to scare people because that's mm-hmm. that's what my my big thing is. When you give me that laugh or you give mm-hmm. me that jump scare, you've just broken the tension for me. Brian right. Martino goes, you will not laugh. You will not jump. You will sit there and you will squirm and I yes. will love it. So, so the very, yeah. very end. Like the very, the very end. end. Yes. Brian Bertino, please come on the podcast. I fucking love you, dude. Like, <laughs> we'll please. Tag him. This we'll is tag my him. plea on, to you. Please. please. Um, so I've had an amazing time with you guys. And I know I said it at the top, guys, but we're getting to the end of the episode now. We're almost to the end of the third act. The credits are about to roll and the oh, curtain's no. about to drop. But... Before that happens, we're going to go back to Halloween Town. And I think I know the answer, guys. But it's in my script. If I go off script, Ghostface gets all pissed off. You know, you see how he just was a minute ago. Um, (laughs) Ghostface, chill out. What we're going to do is we're going to rank Halloween Town on a scale of one to five. We're going to give it a skull count. Now, what we're doing is we're not ranking this on acting, production, (laughs) score, direction, nothing like that. We're not being critical. Mm. What we're doing is ranking Halloween Town on how much it affected you on your first viewing so zero skulls being not effective five being extremely effective you can use half and quarter skulls anywhere in the middle Uh, what would your guys's ranking of halloween town be five five (laughs) Five skulls five skulls absolutely i knew and and it's it's amazing because i think that it really does shape our lives the first time we Mm -hmm. watch a horror movie whether for better or worse i have a friend whose first horror movie was nightmare on elm street and for years, and I mean years, would not sleep with sheets on his bed because that Jesu Garcia Rod scene in the prison scared okay. him so bad, oh, he would not have sheets on his bed. 
hated staying the night at that guy's house. Like, oh, bro, I'm bringing sheets. He's like, the fuck you are. No, he said, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you okay. have some people that go that route, and then you have people that go our route. Like, we get that high for the first time, and then we're constantly mm-hmm. chasing that dragon. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to feel that again. I want right. to get that again. And for you guys out there that are watching, you know I don't condone drug use. If you want to go to use drugs, go watch The Strangers or The Dark and the Wicked. It'll give you that same feeling. So yeah. um, that that to me is the best feeling in the world is being scared and having that anxiety and just, you know, through a horror movie to where life is scary enough. Yeah. You know, right. Let me escape it into a horror movie where I can be scared with a purpose. So right. um, yeah. thank you guys so much for coming on and hanging yeah, out with me. We appreciate it. Yeah. We really appreciate it. It really was a blast. That. And I hope that we can connect in person sometime soon. I got to try that cold brew. Give me some black. That's what I want. Yes. Listen, we have like maybe five so far that we um have on our little menu. So come to the convention and we'll make sure you we'll make sure you have a lot free. I will be there. We we will make this happen. So um guys, please don't go anywhere. I got a couple cool more questions for you. Okay. Um everybody else, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really does help the channel more than you know. And follow Sledgehammer Horror on social media. Our links are down in the description as well. But until next time, keep talking horror. Stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.